Youth Academy only saves have been popular in FM for about as long as I can remember. For the unaware, that's where you do a pretty much normal save, but you're only allowed to use players that come through your club's Youth Academy, i.e. the Youth Intake, and that's great. But wouldn't it be better if every club in the entire nation was also doing the same thing? Me again, back doing videos that can best be described as that bit at the end of the wedding photos where the photographer says, now let's do a silly one. Youth Academy challenges have always fascinated me because you truly are at the behest of the game to provide you with usable players. Sure, there are a couple of factors that you can control. Your junior coaching budget, youth recruitment and facilities all do play a part in providing those players for you. However, the game is still going to be there with the big FM gods of randomness that send you that E-rated youth intake and ruin your dreams. So instead of trudging through a save trying to make that happen by myself i decided to make the entire english pyramid do it for me because efficiency and, and laziness so in this video i've changed the rules of every single english club competition so that only players who are homegrown trained at club are allowed to be in the squads and play in the matches oh and every club has a hundred year transfer embargo to stop them being pesky and poaching youth players from other teams if you want a more detailed explanation of how i've achieved this and how you could in theory implement this in any nation in the game then i've linked an unlisted video in the description with a much more detailed breakdown of how it actually works because i don't want to take up too much time in this video so check that out and now back to the silliness. Today we're actually going to be looking at two versions of this database. One with all the rules that I just explained above and another one that has all of them plus an extra chaotic caveat that only players under the age of 19 on a certain date are actually allowed to play in the games. And that one is especially wild as it basically means that you're only as good as your last three youth intakes. I have Sims 20 plus years into the future for both of those scenarios, which we're going to take a look at later in the video, just so we can bask in the chaos. But before we get to that, I thought it would be fun just to do a run through of the first season of a save using the database with the extremely restrictive under 19 only rules. So here we are in the Premier League. Things look normal, but they are not. Something is afoot. And the reason I chose to do the one season run through with this version and not the one where players of any age can play is that it actually doesn't change as much as you might think in the first couple of seasons with that one, because a lot of players do actually count as homegrown trained at club at all ages, because FM doesn't really do a very good job at differentiating trained at club and which club they trained at. It knows which one it is, but it still counts them anyway, even if they weren't trained at that club. I'll show you what I mean in a minute when we get a little bit closer. But these are just the rules for the Premier League right now. I have all six steps of the English Football League that are available in the game currently all set up with the same kind of rules package varying slightly from the different leagues but they all have the same main goal and that is chaos so you can see the match day rules here the match day squad must have at least 20 players under the age of 18 now i feel like i might have said 19 earlier i did mean 18 it's because when i was originally doing it i was doing it with 19 but i just thought 18 was even more restrictive so the players have to be born after the 1st of january 2005 and you can see they have the opposite here the squad cannot have any players over the age of 18 i.e anyone born after that date sorry before that date the, the default cutoff for this is actually in the middle of the season which i actually find is even more chaotic you can change that though and you can see here the match squad must have at least 20 players trained at club and that bit's absolutely fine but that's just for the match squads themselves that covers the 11 starting players plus the nine substitutes if we scroll a little bit further down you'll see the actual squad registration rules which are very very similar indeed just slightly larger so again like the normal one maximum squad of 25 players they don't have to register 25 players but they can they won't, but they can. And then the exact same thing applies. So a minimum of 25 under 18 players born after that same date, and then a maximum of zero. And the most important rule for this, of course, minimum of 25 players trained at the club for three years before their 21st birthdays. And that's where the beauty of the transfer embargoes in this come in. It means that it stops them from signing young players from other clubs and then having them become homegrown trained at club. The ability to make no transfers means that the only players that they're allowed to bring through are going to be players that come through that club's youth intake itself. Now, originally, there was a slight issue where even though I'd put these 100-year transfer embargoes, embargoes when the clubs got taken over by anyone except internal takeovers they just remove them and cheat so we've implemented a thing that stops outside takeovers and as a result it means that there's no takeovers in the save but bloody hell it's fun and you can see here that the same exact thing applies to the championship and so on and so forth so i bet you're wondering now which clubs are actually most well set up to handle this in the early stages and i'm gonna tell you it's not a lot of them let's put it that way so the first game is on the 12th of august there's usually a friday fixture once this is sorted so we'll go to the 10th part of the original plan was to also have the champions league also have this rule package unfortunately i could not for the life of me figure out how to make that work i'm still quite new to using the advanced editor stuff and i'm quite glad i've even got this far to be honest and if you do like advanced editor stuff um stay tuned for the next
next video because it is probably the most unhinged one we've done so far. But I'll tell you more, a bit more about that later in the video. Aha, I knew it. Friday night game. And I should have also mentioned there's another rule in the Premier League by default, which is under 21 players are automatically eligible. We obviously had to get rid of that. Otherwise, it would have been players from any kind of background were allowed to play in the matches. So we got rid of that too. So now, if you look at Arsenal's squad, obviously that's going to remain the same. But if you look at the registration, uh, you'll see these are the Premier League registration rules. Now, <laughs> they have actually done pretty bloody well. If I'm honest, I'm pretty impressed with Arsenal here. We just turn on the under 21 and 8, under 18 squad. They've managed to register 17 players. And as we scroll down, you'll see that not every club has been quite so lucky. Now, what you'll also note is that there's a disparity between the number of players registered and the number of players trained by Arsenal for three years before their 21st birthdays. And that is because at the very start of a save, they'll have some players in there that are homegrown trained at club, just not Arsenal. And unfortunately, there seems to be nowhere to differentiate between that in the editor. So it does still count them. But of course, as you move through it after the first couple of seasons, since they can't sign any players, that stuff evaporates immediately. So for the first year, there will still be some players that aren't exactly trained at club. But as far as I can figure out, there wasn't a way around it. So I'm inserting this bit from later in the video, earlier in the video, because I don't believe that I actually explained the squad registration bit at the very start particularly well and with regards to the players that don't have the homegrown thing but are able to play weird just using an example here of benjamin arthur at brentford you can see here that technically he is not homegrown trained at club at brentford of course not because he only signed for them from peterborough in 2024 however he would have got that homegrown trained at club status while he was at peterborough and the game has no way from what i can tell anyway of differentiating between the two that's why we put the transfer embargo so going forward that won't happen because they can't sign players from other clubs on some of their profiles for these players it will actually show the trained at club from the previous previous one. Some of them it doesn't, and I don't know why, but they still seem to get the designation within the game. You can see here he's currently working on his one at Brentford currently. But that is the reason that some of those guys can play. You'll notice that once you get a few years in with the sim, as we show you later, that it will in fact just be completely players trained at that exact club because they can't sign anyone else. Brighton have managed to find five uh, Burnley with four. Chelsea have 11, and I think Chelsea will be a very strong contender for the first season of this, purely because they actually do have quite a lot of players that count for this. Palace also have 10. I expect they'll be quite strong as well. Everton with 15. That's very, very good from Everton. 15 players actually trained at club. Sheffield United have zero... <laughs> That might change by the end of the window. Not that they can sign any, they just might make some slightly more sensible decisions about this, but they have none. They've got him. Why is he not in the squad? They're just like, don't need him, bruv. The other thing that's important to note is that because I've said it to trained at club from 0 to 21, it means that youth players that come through the actual academies are immediately qualified as a homegrown trained at club player. They don't have to do three years of anything like that. They immediately qualify. So, shall we progress? So you can just see from the very first... Is that James Beattie? It's not James Beattie. Why would it be James Beattie, Matt? First day of the season, and you can see already that Sheffield United... I mean, they... Are these... Yeah, so they've already got a few grayed out players in their squad because, well, they couldn't really register anybody. And I wouldn't be surprised if most of their first 11, actually, with a few exceptions, is in fact grayed out players. They have changed their mind a little bit and put a few of their actual, like, 16-year-old youth players in, which is about bloody time. But just looking at some of the names you can see here, luckily, what I will say is that Lewis Miley does still count for Newcastle, and that could be a huge benefit for them in the first season. One of the things I've particularly enjoyed so far is seeing the ticker going across the top saying things like, Alexander-Arnold signs new five-year contract with Liverpool. And I'm like, great. I hope you like playing in Europe because that's the only game time you're going to get in the next decade. So let's just catch you up on where the league's looking right now. I expect to see City... No, Chelsea definitely towards the top, right? Wait, what? I mean, actually, Liverpool have started off extremely well. Everton, obviously, with the points deduction. Brentford have managed to win a game. Who did they beat? Of course they did. Of course they did. But as expected, Lewis Miley with the best average rating in the league right now. Not really hugely surprising. Uh, six goals and four assists in his first six starts. Solid for Newcastle, you might say. But he's not the top scorer. That is Jemiah Amulu of West Ham United. Who, as you can see here, does technically count as far as this. It just doesn't show up with that because it's the other designation, essentially. But you can see that he is actually homegrown trained at West Ham. That's why you'll see some players that are registered without the little blue box on them. Because they technically count as the other type, but they still technically count. But seven and four is pretty decent. Oh my god, Arsenal have scored 17 times times in six games. Burnley have conceded 80. We're going to see some 100 goal scorers, I suspect, for many teams. And I'm expecting some lots of concessions. Brentford have actually only conceded nine. That's not bad for a team that allegedly don't have a youth academy. So it's now December. And surprisingly, it's, I mean, Chelsea are up there, as you'd expect, but it's actually a lot of the clubs that you'd expect to be towards the top are actually towards the top. It's sort of like clubs like Everton, in fact, without that deduction would actually be top 10 at this stage and actually have a positive goal difference. But the goal differences are pretty unhinged. Uh, Chelsea with the plus 52 after 18 games. Somebody's been getting spanked. But the top player of the bunch is Donald McNeely of Chelsea, an 18-year-old here. He does have proper homegrown status at Chelsea, so he was a proper Chelsea youth prospect. 18 goals in 18 Premier League matches and four assists. Not bad, really, when you think about it. However, he won't 
won't be able to play for them next season because he's already 18. In case you're wondering what the other leagues are looking like, Norwich and Stoke dominating the championship with Preston rock bottom with nine points. They clearly do not have a lot of homegrown players in that squad. Anyway, we're going to go to the end of the season now to show you how it shakes out and then we'll do the Sims because that's the real fun part. Well, um... Um, because as you can see, Chelsea have won the Premier League 150. Okay, well, I said they might be quite good. It just took them a while to get going. And this is where my question comes in, because I'm wondering if that date has switched when the league has switched over to the new year. I want to see if this says 2006 on the rules now. No, it doesn't which makes it even stranger. But it does make me think there's been a lot of switcherooing going on in January with clubs actually registering a lot more younger players from their academies once they've realised what's actually going on. I think they've managed to bolster themselves in January just by putting more players in their squads. But we'll have a little look through that in a moment. But the first thing you can see, yeah, Chelsea with 101 points, just the three defeats. Spurs managed to lose 10 games somehow, but still managed to come third with a plus 59 goal difference. Man City in there with only plus 17 in the end. They really did fall off. Palace, I thought, would do quite well, and they clearly have there with their plus 18. Just didn't really draw a Lot, it would seem. Uh, Luton did unfortunately slump down and it's actually not been that different down at the bottom other than the sheer amount of goal differences being appalling. Although I must admit with the way Sheffield United are going in real life um, this this down here doesn't seem out of the question. So Chelsea actually scored 169 goals over the course of the season and actually only three teams managed to hit the 100 goal mark Spurs being one of them. City really struggled to score any goals. 64 goals that's actually nearly as well only one more than Villa did. Shout out to Villa as well who conceded 107 goals but stayed in the top flight. Good old them. In fact all three of the top scorers in the league, Leo Castledine and Ronnie Stutter as well, were all from Chelsea. They, I've got to see this. Is there another one in there too? No, not quite. Um, the top three scorers in the league were all Chelsea players. <laughs> Imagine having three different players from your club score over 30 goals in the Premier League. You'd be happy with that. Just have a quick gander at the other league, see if there's any mad stuff, uh, which... The, wow, look at the hair! So it seems to me that Coventry actually, because obviously you have to add players to playable teams, which means some teams like academies, if there's not enough players to fill out the squads, the game will generate some players. And the game just gave Coventry Jamie Rodman. And apparently he's related to Mr. Valderrama. That's incredible. Uh, and he also banked 26 goals for them in the league at 16 years old. But you can see here, because he technically, because he's a regen, he gets automatically that designation, which is what will happen in the coming seasons. Out of interest, how did Coventry get on? Oh, they came 16th. That... Wow, he did a lot. Norwich with 97 points. Huge goal difference. Norwich and Leeds coming back up there. Uh, relatively straightforward. Preston do get relegated with a minus 92 goal difference. What do you reckon? 130 goals conceded? 135. Yeah, not bad. Uh, surprisingly, Sheffield Wednesday actually went down with only 70 goals conceded. Only 70 goals conceded. So staying on the theme of the under-19 one, we're just going to go 20 years into the future on another save that I've got with the same exact setup to see how things have shaken out. And during a couple of my tests, one thing I noticed is that if a team just got a couple of good years of youth intakes, I had an example where Lincoln City got what I could have seemed to be like three back-to-back -back, maybe not golden generations but really solid youth intakes went all the way to the Premier League came second and they got relegated all the way back down to League One again in the next three years hopefully we'll see some stuff like that let's go so we're now in 2043 this is a different database so ignore the first season for that one but I'll take you through we're going to see if there's been any well there will be some wild stuff it's just inevitable see if there's any wild stuff happening well um uh, <laughs> there's some notable absentees from the top 10 there uh, other than Manchester City, of course. Right, Premier League. Well, Southampton and West Ham have won. Wow, City have... I guess City do have an insane academy, so that would make a complete set. Man United relegated bottom of City won the league. Just a rough soul in the wound of their weekend. Just out of it. I'm not seeing Liverpool at all. Um, we are distinctly absent Liverpool in the Premier League considering the academy that they have. But just looking at the past winners here, you can see City have won a load of them. West Ham and Southampton had a couple of good seasons. Man United did grab one, to be fair. Uh, Derby can... Okay, that's going to need some investigation. Derby got a win. Fulham won the Premier League. Hey, you love, well, two Premier Leagues. To be fair, Fulham's academy, again, is extremely good, which would explain their uh, current success right there. The top scorer in the Premier League at the moment, though, is this chap here, uh, Kiel Lombard of Manchester City. And you can see that he's been at City for that. For some reason, it doesn't show it like that. I think it's because the season is technically over, but he is obviously a homegrown, trained at club, Manchester City player, and has played for them for the last four years. 100 appearances dead on in the Premier League, and 74 goals is not bad. He's on 165 grand a week. But this, I believe, will be his last season for Manchester City of actually playing any football. But 74 goals, not bad. Just looking at this, you can see, again, lots of 100 goals being scored there. Man United conceded 111, which is crazy. They must have just had a couple of dud years of youth intakes and not been able to build on it. One of the things I do want to quickly look at is if see if City have got any really old players in their squad, because they will have a few, I suspect. Uh, in fact, yes, they do. David Dolan here, who's 32 years old, who's been at Manchester City since 2026. <laughs> That's commitment right there. That is commitment. He had a little loan after he was no longer eligible to play for City. And then he's just be like, eh, you know what? Just happy picking up a paycheck. And to be fair, I would definitely do it for, I'd do it for 275. 
No, maybe 274, actually. So one of the other things I find quite funny is this, that, yeah, they'll sell a lot of players, obviously, but they don't sell that many players. I mean, they do get rid of quite a lot of players, mostly on loan, it would seem. Just have a look back and see if there's been any absolutely ridiculous results. So Man City, again, there with 96 points was pretty random. Although Bristol City, you'll see. Wow, Bristol City and Bristol Rovers both relegated in the same season. The Battle of Bristol must have been hot. Did they get any wins against each other? They did. In fact, they beat each other in the home games. It's also worth noting here. Uh, Fulham came fifth here but aren't present in this league, which means they must have been promoted and then got it. This is what I mean. And there's Fulham getting relegated along with Spurs and Palace. West Ham actually won the Premier League with only 76 goals scored, but great defence. Wow, what a tightly compacted league. If you do see any teams I miss, then let me know. Brentford's still hanging around. That's impressive. And so this brings us back to what I was talking about earlier with the designation stuff. Technically, he's got the Brentford 15 to 21 now, which overwrites the 0 to 21 one, which is why he technically doesn't show up as homegrown, but the game still considers him homegrown, which is why they are able to have um, 17 players in there, but only 12 technically count here although it actually is 17 it just displays it weird because he actually is registered in their squad and is totally eligible to play but i just knew we'd get a better example a bit later in but you can see here brentford after literally one season upgraded their youth and training facilities which means presumably they got one i could be wrong maybe they actually have one in real life now or at least an fm man city also had a 102 point season here where they won it ahead of ipswich town i want to see if there's any absolute portsmouth there got to the top flight again relegated and got into the conference league that was derby county wow derby county won the league with 72 points i'm very curious to see the fa cup and whether there has been any strange well i mean to be fair those guys would have been quite decent teams at the time i wonder if there was any winners right right towards the start bristol city won the fa cup in 2025 and also port vale reached the fa cup final into in literally the second season of the save which makes me wonder if they went on a mad run up the leagues potentially in that very very early stages so they're currently in league one which is fine uh ah yes so they've been a little bit all over the place wait hang on a minute so they have been in the championship actually for quite a while actually came sixth in the championship at one point but during that fa cup run season they were still in league one they must have just had a hell of a good squad because they didn't even get promoted that year, though, in fairness. Did get promoted soon after, so they might have been in the process of building it and just had a mad run. That's kind of weird, though. Carabao Cup seems to be throwing up some of the same... Although Norwich won it in the first season. And Wrexham got to the Carabao Cup final in 2034. Portsmouth won it as well. Okay, so Wrexham and Norwich... So Norwich won the championship that year, but they also won the EFL Cup, which is bloody impressive. But what happened to Wrexham around that period? Because they're back in League One again, which is very straightforward, I suppose. Have they been all over the place? No, they... Wow, okay. So at the start of the save, they went straight down into the National League and actually stayed there for... I mean, they came 17th in the National League in the second season. Took them a while to sort out their youth facilities, it would seem. But after that, admittedly, within like 10 years, they were back in League One and have kind of just stayed there ever since. Haven't managed to quite break through to go to the championship yet. Maybe they just can't get the youth intake sorted. I do just want to have a little look at like most recent championships seasons and stuff as well just to see if there is any absolutely wild stuff i mean spurs winning it for a start there uh, bromley are in the championship so what the hell happened there that's one of the most wild ones i've seen oh wow look at that <laughs> that's insane this is a roller coaster i would not ride because i'm scared got promoted from the national league immediately went to league one then a season in league one then another then immediately promoted to wow they went from literally non-league to championship in like four seasons came as high as 15th then went all the way back down to league two again straight up to the championship again in another five seasons they're having a lovely old time barnet also did a little spell in the championship here aldershot have had quite a nice little run in it as well any random league one stuff i mean firstly everton and bournemouth are in league one that alone is a shock oh wow Stable in the Premier League, into the Championship, back to the Premier League, and then just pew! Did they maybe cut their budget or something? Back to back relegations from the Championship down to League One, and then they only came 14th in League One this season. Cardiff City were already. Wow. Leicester City were in League Two. Oh my God. They went down to League Two in like five years and have not really come past League One. Other than obviously the most recent season when they were promoted back to the championship. Wow, they were in 13th in League 2. Just trying to focus down at the bottom as Rotherham gone down as well. I want to see if any massive side's gone out of the six playable divisions entirely. I feel like that's unlikely, but you never know. Salford actually went out of National League North at one point. Oh, there we go. Crawley Town out of National League South as well. Right, let's look at records. We have to, right? Fewest points ever was eight for Bristol City. But we're more interested in things like the top most goal. Biggest win, 14-0 for Arsenal over West Ham. Chelsea actually won 37 in a row at one point, which is... That was right at the start. And also from that spell, they also went 67 games without losing. That's a new record. So the most team goals across this entire thing was 139. No, 148. No, it was just Chelsea right at the very beginning, in fact. And the worst defense looks to be Stoke City with 141. I'm curious to see who got the most goals in a single season. Whoa. Chris Henry of Man United with 54 goals in a single year. And also shout out to me, my, my, my Patreon region. <laughs> 
<laughs> with 32. Big up him. But the biggest of them all was Chris Henry of Manchester United, who of course can't play for them anymore, but does play for Scotland. Managed in his three seasons. Yeah, he got seven, then 26, and then just blew out the war. 65 goal contributions in one season, averaging 8.28. That, I believe, must have been a year that Manchester United won the Premier League. I'm assuming he was probably part of the reason. Anyone get an incredible amount in a match? We got a double hat-trick, uh, interestingly not from Henry. Uh, Wesley John Williams got one for Arsenal, though. Darren Murphy as well. Tony Gray, who was another Patreon region, got five. Uh, five? Four? Wasn't expecting many crazy clean sheet records, but Ted Kerr got 28 for Chelsea. I think that actually beats Petacek's record. Chris Henry comfortably wins the highest average record. Or does he? Yes, barely. Youngest player is pretty much 15 or 16 in most years. I love that the oldest player is pretty much the maximum they can be is that. Anyway, now we're going to go to the other version of the database. And just to catch you up, that has the same rules as this one, except this time around, it doesn't have the restriction on the ages of the players, which means if you bring a player through, they can in fact play for you for the entirety of the campaign. And they're going to need to because you can't sign anyone at all. Now, this one's going to take a little while to get going once it starts off, because obviously they'll have a lot of players that technically count as homegrown trained at club, even if they weren't actually playing for them and brought through their academies. But after a few years, you'll see that it would have calmed down and then things get very interesting. So let's jump straight to that. So this one, we're actually in 2046. I was able to get a couple more years done just for extra context. I still suspect we're going to see Manchester City, Chelsea, Liverpool. the usual suspects was the top, but maybe not. Let's find out. Okay. I mean, they are, but well, I say they are. Where's Manchester City? Hello? Oh, there they are. Okay. Uh, also shout out to immediately seeing Chippenham Town there in League Two. Well, Villa have absolutely creamed it for the last three years. Then it was just City, 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 many, many. Wow. Nor Norwich, are, they keep coming up. They keep appearing in this. Spurs getting relegated. Uh, that, that's the thing that's happened. You can see that it looks a lot more normal as far as the actual league, and that's because, obviously, most of these teams will be fielding full squads now because we're so far into the future. And in fact, let's just have a little look. So you can see, in fact, maximum squad size is 25. Aston Villa have registered 25 players, and that is what you would expect to see with this, given that they can actually register players of any age that they choose. But they have to be players that have come through their academy. And apparently Villa have been having a wonderful time of it. But Stephen Presley, of all people, is doing a great job. But it's nowhere near as varied as you would have seen before. So with the top scorer in the Premier League at the moment, it's actually Sheffield United's Charlie Tian, who has 149 goals for Sheffield United in the Premier League. Only one cap for Ireland, interestingly. Maybe he came through as English and then switched his nationality later. Let's just have a little gander. Uh, yeah, no, he's born in Scarif. 149 goals for Sheffield United in the Prem, though. He's got a goal every other game. He's not a bad record, um, particularly in the Premier Oh, no, not always in the Premier League, in fact. Uh, did even better in the Championship with 32 that season. And he's still got more to go. I wonder if anyone's going to break Alan Shearer's goal-scoring record. I wouldn't be surprised if they did. Just looking at the past winners chart to see if there is any kind of mad stuff, other than this insane... Oh, my God, Blackburn won the Premier League in the second season. Now, I guess that makes sense, because in the early stages, they wouldn't have had a chance to bring through those academy players yet, so they were just banned from playing all of their non-homegrown guys, which means that those first couple of seasons could have been very interesting. As you'll note, that Blackburn, Leicester, and Bristol City were the top Seems like, if anything, the weirder seasons are going to be towards the start of this one. So I think we should go investigate. First season of the save, relatively straightforward, as you would have actually expected, although Arsenal did win the league. But it's the second season where it suddenly just, what on earth? <laughs> Blackburn, Blackburn get promoted and immediately win the Premier League in the first season, bringing with them Leicester and Bristol City, who also were promoted, coming second and third, respectively. That's crazy. Brentford did get relegated out of this one. In fact, I wonder where they've got up to now. They're in League One, so they're still doing okay. Did they go down any further than that? No, they've kind of just dawdled out in League One. But you can see that almost immediately they started to fall off the pace a little bit. As you say that, Leicester came second, then Blackburn, then Bristol City. It seemed like it was a case of whoever could get their ducks in a row earliest got the results. And they certainly stuck around for quite a bit. Like Blackburn and Leicester had some really nice early success in this save. Bristol City started to slump away a little bit. And yeah, as you can see, they're starting to fall slightly. Blackburn really did hang on though. And then Norwich, Norwich actually is, if anything, more surprising because they kind of came out of nowhere. They weren't part of that original batch, I don't believe. And then they got some apparently very good youth intakes, got some promotions, but kind of just hung on. And then this year here, promoted from the championship, immediately second in the Premier League, and then won the Premier League a few years, yet, few years later. Also have a conference league to their name. Have they got any crazy records? Most goals by a golf player in the league, Adam Ida, has now retired, in fact. But does technically count as homegrown Trent Norwich. 214 league goals. Now, not all of that would have been in the Premier League, I don't believe. But that's still an insane record. Also managed 57 in one year. But you can now see after sort of the first five or six seasons, it started to sort of sort itself out again a little bit with the big sides, generally speaking, creeping their way back to the top. But fair play to Blackburn. They hang on. Ah, and then they were relegated. 
Uh, that's interesting, actually, because it means that they must have just had a few bad youth intakes after a little while. Maybe they sold a couple of players abroad, potentially, as well. And as a result, they weren't able to fill the squad up at all. And then this happened. Back to the championship again. But Norwich were not to be deterred. They just kept on going. But I want to just turn away from that now and head down into the championship to see if there has been any kind of crate. Well, Harrogate Town are in there with Grimsby for a start. Oh, actually, Bury relegated from the championship. Wow. That's bad. 149 goals conceded is quite a bit. I feel like if it's going to happen, it would have actually maybe happened again slightly towards the start. So Bury have actually been relegated a couple of times from the championship, both times appallingly. The ultimate yo-yo side here in Bury. Yeah, that is insane. They just went bang, 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 straight from like National League, <laughs> literally National League, presumably North, all the way up to the championship in the space of five seasons. Three promotions in a row. Then they had a little pit stop in League One, then straight to the championship. And then they've just kind of stayed there. Obviously, I'll put a link to the databases down in the description to the video as well, so you can have a play around with them. I've also put ones in there that don't have the changes to the cups, just in case you wanted to focus on the leagues for some reason. Preston relegated from League Two here. Seems like Ilkston have been around doing bits for a while now. Luton relegated from League Two here. They've reversed all the way back down the Football League highway. There's actually more Football League sides in here than I was expecting to see. Uh, some of which are now not even in the National League anymore as of this season. Preston are promoted, though. Luton Town went down to the National League North. And the biggest shot for me so far is the absolute demise of Luton Town. Wrexham back into the lower leagues as well. As are AFC Wimbledon and Crewe out of the National League. I'm expecting to find someone surprising in these leagues now based on that. So yeah, there's Luton in National League North. Surely no one really noteworthy has gone down to the seventh tier. Fleetwood Town. Fleetwood Town have. And Crewe weren't far away from it either. Someone's bound to have banged 300 Premier League goals. I think it's almost inevitable at this point that that's definitely the case. One way we'll do that is have a look at some of the major clubs records because it doesn't actually display overall records in here. Don't know why I said display so weirdly there. But interestingly, the most points in the season came from Blackburn in the second season of the save. And City, just a few years later with just nine points... I guess by that point, they hadn't had a chance to get through enough youth players to actually compete yet with some of the other teams that already had homegrown talent. But that's enough about that. Goals overall. Uh, I love that. First season, nine. <laughs> I guess it's because nobody could really put any teams out. And yet again, my patron region does well. Jay Stansfield for Fulham's done pretty damn well in there too. I guess Brighton would have had the bonus of someone like Evan Ferguson in there too. Me again. I promise I haven't touched that player. He's just as randomly generated as the rest. It's just because he comes through at Fulham. Oh, Amanda Broha with seven goals against... 10-0 over Man City. Caden Young absolutely dominated the assist, though, for Villa for many, many seasons. That was like five years in a row he was the top assist at 27 of them. Can we talk about Libero Barbato? Ah, oh, If he... I mean, obviously, he wasn't going to be a Libero, obviously. But can you imagine if he was a natural Libero whose name is Libero Barbato? It wouldn't be one of these videos if I didn't at least have a little look through the database before we go properly diving into the top scorer of all time to see if I can find any funny names for you because I believe there's bound to be a couple. We start off with Tom Dick. Presumably, his middle name is Harry. Tell a lie. Not bad either. Anyway, that's enough immaturity for the time being. Let's have a look at some records, see if we can find... So there you go, Tom Horvath. I believe it's 200... No, it's 260 goals, isn't it? Alan Shearer's record. Blackburn had Dean Cottam with 283. Now, the thing is, not all of those would have been in the Premier League, though, would they? No. So, in fact, he's losing loads of these. So he doesn't count either. Fulham have me... <laughs> Of course they do. Leeds have Martin Osei, which is not bad at all, but I suspect not all of that would have been in the... Pre oh, no, it was. That's pretty good. 241 goals. Liverpool have Sonny Miller. Now, they've not been relegated, surely, in this save, which means, yes, Sonny Miller with 278 league goals. Um, It's kind of interesting that he only really... I mean, he burst onto the scene, like, crazily in those first few seasons, then kind of just tailed off, but he is still playing for them, technically, at 38 years old, but he's done it. Has that, can anyone beat 278? Man City surely have someone. They don't. Well, they do. They've got this assistant manager here, John Omondi, who did still get 271 for Manchester City, but he doesn't beat the Liverpool player. Surely someone's cracked 300. Man United? Bailey Tunian? But no, 245 for him. But what about the Cups? Watch there be absolutely no upsets in the Cups whatsoever. Let's just go straight to past winners so we can see if there was any straight off the bat. Well, yes, actually there was, because Reading won the FA Cup two years in a row. Big up them. They could do with a bit of happiness right about now, I think. That's not bad. Two FA Cup wins in the first three seasons of the save for Reading. And then not only that, they reached the, the FA Cup final in the... F they had four straight FA Cup final appearances in the first five years of the save. I mean, I love that for them. It kind of evened out a lot more after that. But that little run from Reading and Norwich, of course, naturally picking up another trophy. But fair play to Reading. I wonder if they got any Carabao Cups too. They... they <laughs> They only got to two Carabao Cup finals. Sadly, didn't win them. That means they were in the both the FA Cup and Carabao Cup finals during those seasons. Well, that's like, what, six 
Cup final appearances in the first. They got some trophies out of it. Derby did get an EFL Cup, though, in the second season of the save. After that, it kind of leveled out again quite a fair bit. Although Bristol Rovers, EFL Cup final there. In fact, they got two of them. Norwich naturally winning one. It would be weird if they didn't. There's a repeat here of the FA Cup final from many, many years ago. Unfortunately, this one went the way of Manchester City. So there we have it. I know it's dumb, but I like dumb. Dumb is fun sometimes. And I said earlier that I'd give you a little tiny hint as to something that's coming up in another video that's equally unhinged. In fact, I would say that it's far more unhinged. And it's quite simple, really. Editorial genius Hadrian has basically found a way to break the editor into allowing you to have regens come through at clubs at any age that you choose. Now, you can set a normal limit, and I believe it's 25. However, he's broken that. So you can now have regens come through at clubs at any age. And I mean any age. So there's going to be a video coming out on that very, very soon. So where we will be having pensioners spawning at Premier League sides in their youth intakes. And the best part about it is that because they've got such high age, the game genders them at maximum CA. So you just get complete footballers genning at 80 years old. So stay tuned for that coming up next week. If you have enjoyed this video, drop a like. That'll be fantastic. If you're new to the channel, subscribe. That'll be glorious. And I'll see you guys very, very soon for probably a recap on Malta stuff and then that absolutely unhinged madness. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Capybara. Bye-bye.